Chapter Fifteen of *The Surgeon's Daughter* by Sir Walter Scott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Dion Gines, Salt Lake City, Utah. Mister Croft Angry's conclusion: If you tell a good jest and please all the rest, comes Dingley and asks you what was it and before she can know away she will go to seek an old rag in the closet dean swift while i was inditing the goodly matter which my readers have just perused i might be said to go through a course of breaking in to stand criticism like a shooting pony to stand fire by some of those venial breaches of confidence which always take place on the like occasions my private flirtations with the muse of fiction became a matter whispered in miss fairscribe's circle some ornaments of which were i suppose highly interested in the progress of the affair while others really thought mr crystal croftangry might have had more wit at his time of day then came the sly intimation the oblique remark all that sugar-lipped raillery which is fitted for the situation of a man about to do a foolish thing whether it be to publish or to marry and that accompanied with the discreet nods and winks of such friends as are in the secret and the obliging eagerness of others to know all about it at length the affair became so far public that i was induced to face a tea-party with my manuscript in my pocket looking as simple and modest as any gentleman of a certain age need to do upon such an occasion when tea had been carried round handkerchiefs and smelling bottles prepared i had the honour of reading the surgeon's daughter for the entertainment of the evening it went off excellently my friend mr fairscribe who had been seduced from his desk to join the literary circle only fell asleep twice and readily recovered his attention by help of his snuff-box the ladies were politely attentive and when the cat or the dog or a next neighbour tempted an individual to relax katie fairscribe was on the alert like an active whipper in with look touch or whisper to recall them to a sense of what was going on whether miss katie was thus active merely to enforce the literary discipline of her coterie or whether she was really interested by the beauties of the piece and desirous to enforce them on others i will not venture to ask in case i should end in liking the girl and she is really a pretty one better than wisdom would warrant either for my sake or hers i must own my story here and there flagged a good deal perhaps there were faults in my reading for while i should have been attending to nothing but how to give the words effect as they existed i was feeling the chilling consciousness that they might have been and ought to have been a great deal better however we kindled up at last when we got to the east indies although on the mention of tigers an old lady whose tongue had been impatient for an hour broke in with i wonder if mr croftangry ever heard the story of tiger tuliduff and had nearly inserted the whole narrative as an episode in my tale she was however brought to reason and the subsequent mention of shawls diamonds turbans and cummerbands had their usual effect in awaking the imaginations of the fair auditors at the extinction of the faithless lover in a way so horribly new i had as indeed i expected the good fortune to excite that expression of painful interest which is produced by drawing in the breath through the compressed lips 
nay one miss of fourteen actually screamed at length my task was ended and the fair circle rained odours upon me as they pelt bows at the carnival with sugar-plums and drench them with scented spices there was beautiful and sweetly interesting and oh mr croftangry and how much obliged and what a delightful evening and oh miss katy how could you keep such a secret so long while the dear souls were thus smothering me with rose-leaves the merciless old lady carried them all off by a disquisition upon shawls which she had the impudence to say arose entirely out of my story miss katy endeavoured to stop the flow of her eloquence in vain she threw all other topics out of the field and from the genuine indian she made a digression to the imitation shawls now made at paisley out of real tibet wool not to be known from the actual country shawl except by some inimitable cross-stitch in the border it is well said the old lady wrapping herself up in a rich cashmere that there is some way of knowing a thing that cost fifty guineas from an article that is sold for five but i venture to say there are not one out of ten thousand that would understand the difference the politeness of some of the fair ladies would now have brought back the conversation to the forgotten subject of our meeting how could you mr croftangry collect all these hard words about india you were never there no madam i have not had that advantage but like the imitative operatives of paisley i have composed my shawl by incorporating into the woof a little tibet wool which my excellent friend and neighbour colonel macarus one of the best fellows who ever trode a highland moor or dived into an indian jungle had the goodness to supply me with my rehearsal however though not absolutely and altogether to my taste has prepared me in some measure for the less tempered and guarded sentence of the world so a man must learn to encounter a foil before he confronts a sword and to take up my original simile a horse must be accustomed to a faux de joy before you can ride him against a volley of balls well corporal nim's philosophy is not the worst that has been preached things must be as they may if my lucubrations give pleasure i may again require the attention of the courteous reader if not here end the chronicles of the cannon gate End of Mr. Croftangry's Conclusion End of The Surgeon's Daughter by Sir Walter Scott